Number 11. Dolavira Stepwell. In 2014, news reports announced the alleged discovery of a 5,000-year-old stepwell in the Indus Valley city of Dolavira in present-day northwestern India. It's the largest ancient reservoir found in the country to date, measuring 240 feet, about 73 meters long, 96 feet, or 29.3 meters wide, and 33 feet, or about 10 meters, deep. The structure is nearly three times bigger than the Great Bath at Mohenjo-daro in what is now Pakistan which represents the earliest public water tank of the ancient world. At the time of the Dolavira Stepwell's discovery, researchers announced plans to continue investigating the site in hopes of studying water flow patterns, ancient water conservation efforts, and evidence of manufacturing that they found, including beads and semi-precious stones. Stepwells, which are ponds or wells with stairs descending into them, were used for both practical and religious purposes. They also served as monuments, with some bearing elaborate carvings. News of the Stepwell at Dolavira perplexed officials from the Archaeological Survey of India, or ASI, who pointed out that the site was discovered roughly 15 years earlier and was not exactly news. Speaking with Scroll.in, archaeological engineer Vilas Jathoff further explained that just because a well has steps, it does not mean it's a step well. Experts conceded that the structure, which was built around 2500 BCE, is still impressive in its own right, but they contested the seemingly miscalculated claims by the media. Number 10. Roman military camp. Sometime during the 2nd century BCE, around 10,000 Roman soldiers built a sprawling 49 acre or 20 hectare acres military camp in what is now Melgaço, Portugal. The site, known as Lomba do Morda, served as a temporary fortification for soldiers who were crossing the Labrodiodo mountain between the Lima and Minho rivers. Used for short periods, sometimes just days or weeks, during the summer months, the camp was situated along a route that traversed high ground for safety reasons. Temporary accommodations like these are difficult to detect, because they left behind little archaeological evidence and the Roman army often destroyed them before leaving. Researchers discovered Lomba de Mordo using remote sensing techniques. Until now, they knew of several mentionings and writing sources of Roman soldiers crossing through different valleys, but they didn't know exactly where this occurred. The site is the oldest known camp of its time in Galicia, in northern Portugal. Its exact age is unknown, but experts believe it may be linked to the campaign of Roman consul Decimus Iunus Brutus in 137 BCE, a time when Rome was increasingly advancing on northwest Iberia. Number 9. Prehistoric Cat Cabin. A handful of carbonized bamboo fragments found in southwestern China's Sichuan province are from a Neolithic cabin dating back 4,500 years, according to archaeologists from the Chengdu Cultural Relics and Archaeological Research Institute. Discovered among the ruins of Baodun, ancient town, the artifacts represent the oldest known evidence of a bamboo mud-style building on the Chengdu plain. In addition to the structure, the team found tens of thousands of pottery pieces, dozens of stoneware fragments, and suspected rice paddy ruins. The items resemble objects found at nearby excavations of Sangshuindui sites, which came after Baodun was established. Based on the similarities between the artifacts, scientists believe that by further exploring Baodun, they can learn more about the mysterious Sangshuindui culture. The ruins at Baodun are the largest and earliest remains of a prehistoric town along the upper reaches of the Yangtze River, as well as the earliest mass settlement site on the Chengdu Plain and the birthplace of rice cultivation in the region, CGTN reported. Sites like this challenge the long-held notion that the Yellow River Valley was the sole origin of ancient Chinese civilization. Number 8. Mystery Bronze Age Structure Since its discovery on a small hill in northern Italy in 2005, experts have been trying to figure out what a wooden structure, known as the Nocetto Vasca Votiva, was used for. Built sometime between 1600 and 1300 BCE, during the Late Bronze Age, the oak contraption is slightly larger than a backyard swimming pool, according to the Cornell Chronicle. Using dendrochronology, the practice of dating an object or event based on a tree's annual growth rings, and radiocarbon dating, a team of researchers from Cornell University 
recently determined that the structure's upper tank was built in 1432 BCE and that its lower tank was built in 1444 BCE. They pinpointed these dates with 95% certainty, allotting for a margin of error of four years. A newly published paper describes how the Nocheto Vasca Votiva was built during a time of major societal change in the region, which was characterized by fewer larger settlements, more specialized manufacturing, and changes in burial practices. Due to its location atop a hill, the structure was probably not used as a well or reservoir, and it contained a collection of artifacts that appear to have been deliberately deposited into it, including figurines, ceramic pottery, and stone and wood objects. The evidence indicates that it was likely used for a supernatural water ritual of some sort. Number 7. Bronze Age Homes Central Europe's largest early Bronze Age settlement, nicknamed the German Stonehenge, is located roughly 85 miles or 137 kilometers southwest of Berlin in Sachsen-Anhalt. More formally known as Ringheiligtum Pulmulta, the Neolithic site dates back to the late 3rd millennium BC and contains an arrangement of seven concentric wooden rings. Excavations at the site have turned up gruesome finds, including mutilated bodies of women and children, with some some bearing evidence of severe head trauma and rib fractures from around the time they died. Researchers long believed that the site was used for seasonal sacrificial rituals and religious events, but recent excavations found a two-house dwelling, indicating that people may have lived at Ringhalishtum Pumulta. Archaeologists uncovered further signs of permanent habitation, including 20 ditches, numerous burials, and 80 complete house plans encompassing 130 dwellings. Most of the homes date back to around 2200 BCE, during the time of the Unyajetsa culture, but some are even older, originating around 2800 BCE and bearing the signs of the Bell Beaker culture. Archaeologists are continuing to explore this newly discovered residential zone in hopes of learning more about the Unyajetsa culture's social and religious customs. Number 6. Death Masks of Mycenae While excavating the ancient Greek city of Mycenae in 1876, German archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann discovered seven gold funerary masks that were placed on the faces of buried bodies. He was convinced that one of the masks belonged to King Agamemnon, a Mycenaean king mentioned in Homer's epic poem The Iliad. While the mask was ultimately dated to 400 years before Agamemnon's time, it's still famously known as Agamemnon's mask. Bearing the image of a man who appeared to have died around age 30, it stands out against the other masks, which are simple and lack specific features. Speaking with Xinhua News Outlet, Konstantinos Pascadili, curator of antiquities at the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, explained that whoever the man was, he was considered royalty and was buried with full honors, and that all the recipients of the gold masks were important people. The masks are largely a mystery to this day, especially since the people who lived in the region were rather poor until around 1600 BCE, when they suddenly became extremely wealthy. Experts don't know how or why this happened, where the gold for the masks was sourced from, or where the Mycenaeans got the idea of covering the faces of their dead with gold. Number 5. Shamanic Snake Staff during recent excavations at a late Stone Age dig site northwest of Helsinki in southern Finland, a team of researchers discovered a 4,400-year-old wooden staff shaped like a snake. They believed that the Neolithic shaman may have used the 21-inch long or 53-centimeter stick for magic rituals. According to a new study, carved from a single piece of wood, the piece depicts a long, slithering snake with an open mouth. The team that conducted the research believes that it may represent a grass snake or a European adder, but not everyone agrees. A researcher not involved in the study told Life Science that, in her opinion, the depiction more accurately represents a viper. She further added that the viper has historically played a significant role in folk religion and magic. The shaman who owned the stick likely used it for rituals and possibly for talking to the dead. The people who lived in the area believed that it contained a land of the dead, according to ART News, and snakes represented an intermediary of sorts between the real and spiritual world. This dig site was discovered by accident in the 1950s by a ditch digging team, but excavations since then have been intermittent. Scientists believe the settlement was inhabited from 4000 BCE to 2000 BCE. Number 4. 
Roman Basilica. Israel's largest known Roman era basilica was just discovered in Tel Ashkelon National Park near the shore of the Mediterranean Sea. Founded by Herod the Great, the first century structure functioned as a public building where citizens carried out business transactions, met for social and legal reasons, and held performances and religious ceremonies, according to the Israel Antiquities Authority, or IAA. Measuring 360 feet, or 110 meters long, and 130 feet, or 40 meters wide, the building boasted a colonnade consisting of 40 feet, columns, and had a central space flanked by two side halls. Around 200 marble objects at the site were imported from Asia Minor during the 2nd century. In 363 AD, the basilica sustained heavy damage from an earthquake along the Dead Sea, and was abandoned. Some of the building's marble was repurposed centuries later under the Abbasid and Fatimid caliphates. In addition to the building itself, the team found coins dating back to Herod's rule, which lasted from 37 BCE to 4 BCE. This isn't the first time archaeologists unearthed the 2,000-year-old site. Back in the 1920s, British archaeologist John Garstang discovered and reburied the structure. Recent excavations began in 2008 and are ongoing, with the ultimate goal of restoring the site to its former glory. Number 3. 1,000-Year-Old Egg Based on chicken egg fragments discovered throughout Israel, archaeologists know that poultry farming came to the region over two millennia ago. Recently, they found an incredibly rare intact egg while excavating a cesspit in the ancient city of Yavna. It was incredibly well preserved, owing to the oxygen-free human waste it sat in for around a thousand years. Staff members unfortunately managed to crack the egg while removing it, despite taking utmost precautions. Whoops. Most of its contents were lost, but part of the yolk was saved, and the researchers preserved it with plans to perform a DNA analysis. The crack was also repaired thanks to the director of the IAA's Organic Materials Conservation Laboratory. In addition to the egg, the team found three dolls made from bone, which were customary toys of the period, as well as an oil lamp unique to the late Abbasid period, which was used for dating the egg. Israel is also home to Maresha, one of the earliest known sites with evidence of chicken farming. The practice appears to have arrived there around 2300 years ago, after the conquest of Jerusalem by Alexander the Great. Number 2. Shark Attack Victim Roughly 3000 years ago, a man living in Japan was brutally attacked by a shark. He died with hundreds of injuries to his arms, legs, chest, and abdomen, and was buried at the Tsukumo site near Japan's Sato Inland Sea. Experts from the University of Oxford were baffled when they first examined his remains, wondering what could have possibly caused such horrific wounds. A thorough analysis of the injuries ruled out human conflict and more common animal predators and scavengers, leaving the team to conclude that a tiger shark, or a white shark, mauled the unfortunate individual to death. Based on the number of tooth marks on the skeleton, the attack likely lasted a while. Researcher Rick Schulting told CNN that evidence of shark attacks on humans is rare in the archaeological record, which makes sense, since there are only a handful of fatal shark attacks on humans throughout the world today. The mutilated remains represent the oldest known evidence of such an occurrence. Number 1. Europe's Oldest Wine Greece is one of Europe's oldest winemaking regions. The practice may have even originated there. According to a new study detailing the discovery of Europe's oldest wine near ancient Philippi in northern Greece, it was there, in a single house, that archaeologists found thousands of ancient grape seeds and ceramics containing equally old traces of wine. The evidence was preserved after a fire broke out around 4300 BCE and destroyed the home. Spanning roughly 11 acres or 4.5 hectare acres, the Delikitash site is a tell or a mound, which grew over thousands of years as humans repeatedly built over the site. Looming nearly 50 feet or about 15 meters above the surrounding area, the layers extend as far deep as 55 feet or about 17 meters below ground. 
researchers only recently discovered and began excavating the lower levels at Deliki Tosh, which contain evidence of the little studied early and middle Neolithic people who live there. The prehistoric wine was discovered among these layers and presents interesting questions about the role of alcohol in the ancient society's culture, and any problems they may have experienced due to alcohol consumption. Furthermore, archaeologists hope to learn more in general about the societies who occupied the site during these early periods, including their social and economic organization. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about ancient archaeological discoveries, let me know in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe. Bye for now.